Everybody's Tyler here at Championships, checking team number 1323, Madtown Robotics, one of the most premier teams in the world. Madtown's been building fantastic robots every single year. And here at Championships, we're filming this right at the end of Friday, are absolutely dominating on the field. Take a look at what Madtown has to offer. You've got to love the packaging. It's so iconic on Madtown as we go through. Of course, we'll be following the entire scoring function as well, but we'll be talking about some cool programming things we're doing with object detection, uh, different states and more. So take a look, find out more about 1323 and their charged up robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robox competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Aurelia, right, start up on your robot here. We're going to be talking about this awesome wide intake. I love wide intakes on robots, and we see you know teams doing different aspects of it. I think wide intake's the way to go. And then we're going to be talking about your uh, tunnel area as well, so talk to me more about what's gone into it. Yeah, so our first point of contact for the cube itself is this, this overhand intake. It's very similar to the one that we ran last year. It allows us to actually funnel them inside, and then once it's in that position, these hot dog rollers, this this roller itself actually works in unison with these uh, flex with these star wheels, and from there it allows us to center and actually send the cube towards towards the end of the tunnel. And then these these other these other rollers actually help keep moving the cube towards the end position where it does the handoff. So when you're looking at approaching this game, I mentioned you know wide intakes are, are awesome. It's been working out well for you. Uh, when Matt Town looked at this game and said, hey, this is the way you want to go, can you kind of walk me through that process of like the design process saying yeah. this is what we want to do? So for us, a real, uh, main focal point that we had was how are we going to be able to score multiple game pieces, especially in the community zone. We found out that it's not there's no limit on how many you can actually hold or store in our robot. So that's where our tunnel came in. And then for our tunnel, it allows us to hold three game pieces in there, as well as doing a simultaneous scoring and that also works in unison with the elevators. And obviously been working out absolutely fantastic as we go through here. Let's continue on. Gabriel's going to talk more about the uh, arm and elevator uh, as well, too. And I know we'll be showing a little bit of demo, and then we'll get in positional control, kind of show up all the features. But, you know, when your team approaches it, one of the things that I love is we've seen so many teams, they try to go with the really small base for things. It doesn't give as much real estate. Your team has gone pretty wide on it. Tell me more about the design philosophy and, of course, what's gone into it. All right, for sure. So the main thing we realized this year, as soon as we looked at the game manual, was that many teams were going to build very simple robots. A lot of teams you see are very small robots. So we thought, all right, let's just go as wide as we could go, as heavy as we could go. You know, to uh, we really did realize that so many robots will be similar. And so we told ourselves, let's be as unique as possible, especially in the more competitive, uh, competitive matches, you know, high level gameplay like in Einstein's where you know, there's going to be a lot of different teams there, a lot of very, very good teams, and we really wanted to be unique. You know, we had to be different is, is how we were thinking about it. So. so as you look into the elevator and arm here, they have walk me through a little bit about it, and we can kind of show up a little bit of movement on it so we can see what that full structure looks like. Sure, yeah. So uh, we'll start off. Uh, so we have this arm here. So we have a horizontal and vertical elevator. And so this horizontal elevator will come out and then it'll go back in. And then this is powered by chain and rope. And then we also have the vertical elevator, which is powered by one singular long belt. And then this will go just go all the way up. Oh, it's like right now, yeah, it's fine. So the elevator, the elevator will come up and down, you know, depending on whatever position we want it to be. Um, and then we have the arm here, which will come down to do the handoff for the cube as well as the cone, just depending, of course, on what it is we want to do exactly during the match. So we can go ahead and show off. Yeah, the, let's the uh, I'd love to see how that handoff and that transfer works on your team. Yeah. I love how quick that just went through right away on that. When you're looking at, uh, you know, for cones in particular, are you bringing cones in through that intake tour, or is that just strictly going from the stations for you? Yeah, so the cones, this, is strictly only for this intake here. Gotcha. We just call it the claw 
for our, you know purposes. But so yeah, we just call this the claw, and then this is strictly cubes, the, only the cube intake. Got it. Makes sense on that. Um, Let's talk more about some positional control, Nathaniel, and what's gone into it from that aspect. Um, I know you're doing some uh, object detection as well, too, so I'd love to show more of that and how that's working out for Madtown. Uh, yeah, so I guess like the main thing is <clears throat> making sure everything is moving in unison to basically get our end position, our claw, to where we want it to be. So whether that be we're intaking cones from the ground, whether we're doing the cube handoff, whether we're scoring, we want everything to move as fast as possible. So the way we do all that is we coordinate everything so that everything is moving at the same time and in a certain way. So for example, if the vertical elevator is up to about about here, we don't want the shoulder to come out because sure. then yeah. it'll, hit the, it'll hit the top of the robot. Um, so there's like various checks that we do to make sure that uh, most importantly, A, the, the, the shoulder and the claw never hits up here the limelight because the moment we lose our limelight is the moment we lose our, um, our scoring and I'll get into that later. And then, so the next thing I guess you can say is we don't want, we never want to collide further than we can uh, extend out right here. <clears throat> so we never want to go beyond this point because then we're putting too much stress on the shoulder, which is, which is not what we want to do. So for your team, when you're uh, picking up on here, so are you, you mentioned before you're mostly looking at stations for that, right? But you're able to pick up vertical cones then too? Yeah, yeah. So we're able to pick up vertical cones and then we're also able to load, uh, we're also able to pick up tip cones as well. So the first thing that happens is we go to about like the same, we go to the same exact position we were to intake a cone. The only difference is whenever it's tip, whenever the, the co-driver specifies like the, the flip position, uh, it will go down and go all the way against our bumper and then the driver just backs up all the way and then they just release it and then it just uprights the cone and then we're just able to intake it as normal. So that process is a little bit slower for Matt Town to do that, right? So I'm assuming that's not a preference you do, but definitely having the versatility is great for it too, right? Yeah, yeah because <laughs> some cones were tipped and we realized like some cones were placed in the center of the, of the field. And then we realized that, hey, if they're out there, might as well grab them. But then we realized like towards like the high level of play, uh, there wasn't very, uh, very cones out there. So then that's when we just resorted to being more consistent and going to the human, uh, human loader zone. Let's start to wrap up uh, on your robot here and talk to me about uh, your op your object detection that you're doing uh, on your robot. And we'll show a little bit on screen here in a second. Uh, and then uh, kind of just work your way uh, through anything else you want to cover. So the object detection is powered by the Google Portal, which is a co-processor. And so uh, the main processors are Limelight. So this is just a, a Google Corral plugged into the Limelight. And then this is on the uh, detector pipeline. And we basically just used the upload a model that the, um, that the Limelight provided. And so right here, we could see the object detection. And we use object detection in auto to pick up our last cone because we realized like after, after moving throughout the field in auto, uh, our position, especially like going to get that last cone, our position is sometimes off. And we need that to be perfect in order to grab it perfectly centered with the cone. So uh, we use object detection to make sure that we line up perfectly with the cone in order to score it center. Well, Madtown Robotics, what a phenomenal machine you've uh, created this year. Uh, like I said, as we're filming this, looking absolutely in a great position for an awesome run, so we can't wait to see how you do here. But first off, congratulations on making a robot that's truly inspiring for the first community to look at as well, too. I think that's something a lot of teams don't think about. It's not just building a great robot, but it's also inspiring others in the first community, which I think you've done very well. So congratulations, and good luck the rest of the way. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.